Okay, very good morning to everyone. It's Tuesday, 22nd of October, so I hope you are doing well. Uh, going to talk about, as you can see, updates on Boris Johnson and his plans for Brexit. Uh, there's quite a few developments and timings to look out for throughout the day and the next coming days, so I'll try and keep it as uh, clear and concise as possible, if that even is possible when, it talks, when you talk about Brexit. Uh, also going to talk about Trump sounding a little bit more optimistic last night on the US-China trade situation, giving some hope about a deal being signed in Chile when they meet uh, in a month's time. We've also got expectations about the oil inventory data for this week, where it is anticipated for another build for the sixth consecutive time, which would be the longest string of builds for a approximately a year. We also had Canadian elections overnight, but very small move seen in the Canadian dollar, but I can quickly get you up to speed with what the headlines are there. And then we've got a number of earnings reports to come out ahead of the US Open of some uh, magnitude in regard to larger market cap stocks today. So that's what's on the agenda. Quick look at the, the charts overall, just from a, a general sentiment point of view. Obviously, Sam will run through this uh, in more detail with specific technical levels. Uh, but generally speaking, a positive close on Wall Street, as you can see, um, the S&P 500 having a little bit of an extension overnight, having traded above that psychological 3,000 toward the close uh, yesterday evening. So overnight in Asia, kind of generally following suit. Uh, European indices been pulling back a touch since the uh, European players came into the market, but the DAX for the moment still holding on to um, moderate gains. Uh, elsewhere, it's pretty quiet. Uh, FX markets basically flat in the major pairs, reflection really of a uh, re relatively subdued dollar. Uh, gold prices reflecting that as well, just finding some re resistance near term at the pivot level, uh, only trading up about one and a half dollars for the time being, and then crude oil a touch lower, 17 cents. So overall, um, just relatively quiet, no real major headlines developing overnight, more so just a bit of a positive finish to proceedings last night on Wall Street, uh, predominantly surrounding some optimism around the trade dialogue between the US and China. Um, but before we get to that story, let's just jump straight in on Brexit. And what are we looking out for today? Well, today, uh, as you can see from these headlines, uh, MPs will come together at 7 p.m. London time for what's known as the second reading vote on whether Parliament agrees with the general principles of the bill. Uh, this will then follow various other proceedings, which I'll show you now. So um, this is the kind of graphic that the BBC obviously do often, uh, and it makes it quite an easy a way of looking at what is next to come essentially with this whole situation. So a speaker has ruled out a meaningful vote that happened yesterday and now the withdrawal agreement bill has been introduced and that's either going to be a case of pass or fail. Um, expectations I'd say on the balance here are that it will pass but then the idea is about then the next stages beyond this is about the hearing of major amendments of which then one which we'll discuss is going to be predominantly tabled by Labour about remaining in the customs union, which could sculper the entire deal for Boris Johnson, essentially, because uh, it would mean then that his meaningful vote becomes meaningless in that respect. Um, one thing then that we can look at is this, which is, and I can share this in the, the ch trading live chat room, that makes life easier, but this is literally a line by line um, kind of timings around each part of this significant uh, proceeding. So a couple of points here just to, to, to make clear. So an analysis of MPs' previous votes and statements do suggest that Johnson probably has enough support to win uh, the vote, the vote on the withdrawal uh, agreement bill, uh, but it will be immediately followed by a second on whether MPs agree to his rapid timetable for pushing the bill through. So this is this one at 7.15. That will come immediately after, if all being as expected, that passes at 7. 7.15 will have the vote on the programme uh, motion. This is basically the timetabling of what Parliament are debating. Um, if it doesn't pass that hurdle, he could still deliver Brexit, 
but he'd have very little chance of doing so on time, which is obviously his commitment to get it done by the 31st of October. Now, one thing just to bring to your attention is that actually the government released a 110-page withdrawal agreement bill, uh, along with a 125-page little note pack explaining what that means. Uh, they released that at 8 p.m. last night, expecting MPs to have read through all of that overnight to be in a position to be able to make judgment on what is arguably one of the most important proceedings in UK political history. So you can see where I'm going with this. Likelihood is there's going to be a lot of disgruntled MPs. Uh, and this is where the idea is, well, maybe he can't get that hyperspeed hearing through, uh, looking to do it in multiple days rather than what would take a much longer time period uh, in more normal circumstances. So there is potential hurdles to, to navigate here. If the, the programme motion passes, uh, so we'll know that about 7.30, then first committee stage votes will happen at 10.30pm, so a late one for the MPs in Parliament. And then the committee stage continues with votes every three hours with amendments on keeping the UK in the customs union with the EU and calling a second referendum are likely to appear. Again, these are amendments to the withdrawal agreement bill before then it later is, would be ratified uh, in additional hearings. So that's not going to happen going off the Bloomberg timetable until the sessions that we'll see tomorrow afternoon. But obviously, to get to that point, we have to just make sure we navigate through some of the ones later on this evening. Now, a few other points here. Um, again, I will share this with you uh, so you can read it all uh, in a bit more detail in your own time because there's quite a lot of information. But to summarise a few other points, um, now that Johnson has sent the letter asking for Article 50 extension, uh, there is talk that the government could have another stab at a meaningful vote, which is the top left-hand box. However, uh, the likelihood here, as what we saw yesterday, is that the House Speaker Burko or uh, it would be highly unlikely he would allow that to go through. Uh, you can safely bet that there will be an amendment, though, put forward, as we just discussed, uh, if we get through these initial proceedings, um, to make ratification of the deal conditional on holding a second referendum. This has been Labour's kind of plug. But despite the Labour Party giving their blessing, most don't think this has enough numbers in Parliament to get through. So the amendment on the idea of a uh, confirmational second referendum Although some might want it, it's unlikely to get the backing necessary with the numbers to go through as a, as a pass for that specific amendment. The one that's the one to watch is the one to try and force the government into negotiating customs union access as part of future trade talks. Last time this was voted on, it was called the so-called uh, indicative vote, if you can remember. Uh, that was back in the spring. And actually, that indicative vote, that was one of the closest ones that we've had. That was defeated by three votes at the time. Now, back in April, 89 lawmakers abstained. But a fair chunk of them may be minded to vote for a customs union this time round in order to break up um, the ambition of Boris Johnson. If the customs union amendment passed, the assumption is the bill would lose the support of the 28 kind of pro-Brexit Conservative MPs or those so-called Spartans, which had previously given their backing to Boris Johnson, of course, and that, given the lack of support he's already got, or he hasn't got from the DUP, would mean his whole thing just blows up at that point. Uh, and then and there were a few options we were talking yesterday. Uh, all routes seemingly are still leading down this avenue it just depends on how and when that ultimately probably the resolution to all of this could still well be a general election which all things being equal perhaps was Boris Johnson's strategy all along um, I guess though what Labour will be mindful of is they will want to put off a general election as long as possible to make it look as bad as possible that Boris hasn't really been able to uh, get it over the line as soon as possible. But one very small tail risk is that Boris Johnson could technically call a no confidence in himself, as ridiculous as that sounds, meaning then that it gives 14 days for opposition parties to try and club together to form a credible 
kind of opposition. But the problem is that that would need to be a cross-party alliance, which comes with lots of difficulties because uh, no one really wants to team up with Labour. And the Lib Dems have said they don't want to team up with anyone, given that their far extreme angle of revoking Brexit all along or as its end game, meaning that then Boris could well be in a position, well, look, um, I need to stay as the interim caretaker prime minister and we need to have a general election. And then at that point, all polls still remaining equal. The average poll of polls still gives him a distinct lead at the moment, as much as we need to take that with a pinch of salt. So that's the latest. That's what's going on at the moment with Brexit. Hopefully that's as short and sharp as I can keep it. Uh, as far as this type of news flow goes. What I will do is, when I finish this briefing, I will share this graphic and this graphic and this graphic uh, all in the chat rooms. Uh, I think I've tweeted most of them anyway from my Twitter account. You can see my handle there. So if you need them, do check them out there. Moving on, I did mention about some positive noises coming out of Washington, uh, which helped US indices kind of drift higher uh, yesterday, the S&P is trading back above 3,000 for the moment. Uh, and this coming, of course, in the midst of earnings season fully underway. So what did Trump say? He said China has indicated that negotiations over initial trade deal are advancing, raising expectations the nation's leader could sign an agreement in a meeting next month in Chile. Um, Trump said that they've started buying. This is in reference, of course, to the um, part of the agreement with that partial deal signed two weeks ago about, I think it was 40 to $50 billion worth of upfront agricultural purchases that China pledged to make in order to reach this kind of temporary ceasefire. Um, and Trump very happy that that now has begun. And of course, this is important for him politically to appease his base, given the fact that they, the farmers, are the ones that have been struggling uh, significantly. Uh, under the pulling out of some of the purchases that China were making as the biggest buyer traditionally of those goods. Uh, however, it's not all positive, uh, kind of plain sailing. The Commerce Secretary, Wilbur Ross, um, he said the, quote, actual meat of the agreement could come in two additional phases yet to be completed. So just tempering a, perhaps a little bit of the, of the president's optimism, uh, a little dose of reality. Don't forget the whole more contentious issues about the uh, intellectual property theft and these types of major sticking points have not yet been addressed. And so hence the reason why some initially were a little bit, um, you know, a little bit flat or neutral sure in their response in regards to um, the initial partial deal. So one to watch. Elsewhere, other headlines to be aware of. Uh, as we go into the API crude oil infantries later on tonight, 9.30 London time, uh, and then we'll get the DOEs tomorrow, the expectations here is that it's probable um, that infantries, the headline crude number, rose for a sixth time, a sixth week in a row, ending the week of October 18th. That would mark the longest run of consecutive builds in almost a year. The number at this point in time is for an expected build of 3 million barrels. Uh, elsewhere, Saudi Aramco uh, continue to just state uh, quite explicitly they're now back to producing crude at normal levels, uh, having raised its output briefly to restock uh, storage depleted after those September drone attacks on their infrastructure. And then the other piece of news that we've had overnight, uh, not going to dwell too much on this because, quite frankly, the Canadian dollar hasn't reacted at all. Uh, but Justin Tredo overcomes scandals to win second term in his divided country. However, he has seen his power diminish somewhat as he will now lead a minority government. I think at last check he accumulated about 156 seats, which puts him short, meaning he has to team up and the likely probable candidate to form this coalition will be the pro-Labour New Democratic Party which has secured about 24 seats, putting his government at about 180. Uh, but overall, I don't, I mean, it seems as if the market price is taking this in its, in its stride, so not perhaps overtly surprising. And if anything, the fact that he has remained in power uh, likely to just add some sense of calm with continuity uh, in that sense is usually how it's reflected in market prices. 
Finally, earnings, uh, more to come. Uh, Monday was pretty quiet, actually. It starts to get a little bit more, a little bit more interesting. Pre-market, we've got McDonald's, Procter & Gamble, UPS, Biogen, United Tech. They're probably the bigger market cap names to be aware of. And then aftermarket, if you were interested uh, in any of those kind of social media, or they're more kind of generally tied to or, or responsive to general sentiment. And Snap Inc. is reporting aftermarket. Um, just as a guideline, and so you're aware of the landscape of earnings for the week ahead. Uh, so they're the major ones for today. Tomorrow you get Boeing, the biggest Dow component, and you get Microsoft, largest company in the world, reporting. Then Amazon's to follow after the market close on Thursday. European earnings, if you are looking at them at all, a uh, slightly smaller German software firm called Software AG, up about 10%. Novartis, the pharmaceutical firm, up about 2% this morning. Uh, Reckitt Benkiza in London, though, after their earnings are down close to 6%, uh, if you are looking at some of those UK names. Uh, also, just to finish and conclude on my part, I've uh, just seen that EU Council President Tusk has commented while I've been delivering this last few minutes. Uh, he said the EU is to react to the UK's delay request in the coming days, and the EU is ready for all scenarios. So pretty much just waiting to see, I would guess, Europe what we can do at this point given that uh, timetable um, what we can do and what direction we're heading in before they can really comment about the terms and conditions of the extension uh, if that is the case that they're they're going to give calendar wise for today we have a very quiet morning there's nothing really scheduled of major significance there's public sector net borrowing coming out of the uk but Seldom is that really a market mover, and certainly for the pound, there's just too much other political focus that's going to dominate really the price movement of the currency. Later on this afternoon, uh, Canadian data is at 1.30, retail sales, so definitely a market mover if you are looking at the loonie. Uh, otherwise, for the US, existing home sales uh, will come later on, and the oil inventories aftermarket. Speakers, uh, it's pretty quiet, there's actually nothing really scheduled, uh, at least for the moment. And then you've got those earnings which you do need to be aware of. Uh, also for any crude traders, uh, well, it looks like you've got the November futures expiry, but I'm not sure that can be right uh, timings wise, so I'll double check that. Um, but yeah, with the, the timetable of Brexit, I'd probably overlay this um, on your calendars. Um, if you were sticking around, I mean, if you're kind of sitting there asking yourself the questions, should I just pack it in for this morning and come back later on tonight uh, to trade from 7 till 10.30? Uh, let's not forget that in reality, when you're trading come some of these headlines, it is very uh, illiquid generally, very whipsaw price action, can be quite difficult to really get a handle on, and it's quite high propensity that you could get chopped up. So I would say if you're a more experienced trader, then sure, uh, that can be something that you could trade. Uh, otherwise, if you're new, it might be better perhaps just to just kind of leave it alone, try to focus on other products which are move, move, moving in a lot more of a kind of normal, smooth, orderly fashion at the moment rather than quite a jumpy pound. Um, but if there is key moments, obviously around 7 to 7.30, whether he can, whether, when we have the vote on the second reading and then the vote on the program motion. These are the key things you're looking out for today. If both pass, that will lead us on then to the amendment and it's the customs union one that will be key, not the second referendum as a summary. All right, that's it from me. Hand you over to Sam. And I'll let him go over some technicals. Thanks very much. Hi guys, good morning. Hope uh, we're all doing well. Better than Arsenal anyway. Um, let's have a, a quick look over. We'll start off with uh, the Euro this morning, which is just drifting uh, down, uh, almost getting towards yesterday's low. Relatively small range this morning to begin with. Uh, but just in general, this, this area, pretty much where we're trading now, is, is pretty significant. It was the high that we had back on Thursday. Nice support 
on Friday afternoon as well and we failed to break below there yesterday afternoon around about four o'clock I believe yeah uh, so keep a keep a watch on here you could call it a zone really uh, just put a bit below where we're trading from yesterday's lows the lows that we had Friday afternoon as well so it would be somewhere to, to keep an eye on that pivot this morning uh, 112 above there on the futures uh, almost your mini range now uh, I would say so to the downside I guess if we make this zone a bit more appropriate we could call that 111.80 and then up to uh, 112 so 20 tick zone um, no harm in, in waiting for the move to really kick on when it breaks either way or if of course it breaks either way in terms of trend lines to, to the lows nothing too significant that I would want on obviously we know the euro this year has, has been a, it's always been a good opportunity when you've had say a trend like this and, and then you get that break I mean you could argue we had a bit of a, a breakdown this morning but not too accurate uh, to be completely honest. Uh, however, I probably would still have something on uh, like that, just in case we were to come up and find some resistance there later on. But the euro hasn't really been moving too much over uh, this well, the morning and yesterday, uh, and contained in the range as expected. The pound yesterday, uh, obviously we pushed higher, literally while we were doing the briefing, and obviously then it never actually came back to that pivot point. So we'd have to have been quite aggressive to have got uh, well, I guess at the time we were saying uh, initial target to be uh, the initial high from Friday 129.89 before then uh, reaching uh, the high we had from last week, which we did. And then uh, double top there, failure to push on and, and we're now coming back towards that area. So I'd have it marked up 129.70, the, the previous highs, give or take a tick or two uh, before we did break through uh, around half eight. So. If I just put this down to 15 minute, you can just see if we were to come back and test this area here, uh, that'd be something I'd, I'd have marked up as a, a point of interest. Um, and then to the upside, obviously, you can see the we've already got a double top from this morning, so 130.11 as well. If we can get through there, then sure, yesterday's highs can look to come in. And similar to the euro as well, just trying to see have we got any nice trend lines from the lows is relatively choppy which you would expect with a pound at the moment following these comments that are coming out obviously we gap lower filled that gap pretty quick and and now we're in a relatively small range and that sums up really the start to the week i would say yesterday was a, a pretty quiet day uh, elsewhere stocks which just drifted higher uh, we are just coming down uh, a bit now uh, and actually this this area much like the euro you've got a high from thursday which we're just testing now. So uh, below here, if it wasn't to, to hold up, 3,000 pivot level and, and just below is a, a relatively decent point. The cash open took us below yesterday's morning's uh, high. Uh, we snapped back and then found support there as well. So uh, keep a, a watch, I would say, if we were to come back down to this level, 29.97, I, I like the, the look of uh, as well. Before that, we would have to get through these trends here you can see so if we were to you know not find support on yesterday's high or Thursday's high uh, around about 3005 which is also the low of the day that would be a point to keep an eye on as we have just started to drift down euro stocks you can see testing its pivot and DAX also near enough the low of the day so key level also for the DAX if we can push Below here, we found support yesterday evening's uh, uh, lows as well to keep an eye to see how uh, European stocks go from the uh, uh, for the next sort of half hour, and that could well drag on US equities. But a bit of support coming in nonetheless. Quick look over uh, at oil. Yesterday we had a, a decent move lower during the the uh, well just before uh, the briefing started, and we broke that trend. Never came back to retest it. However. Uh, what was a previous low of the breakdown, 0.5378. You can see we had marked up, uh, I guess, well, tested late on at 7 o'clock, uh, and that's held since then. Worth, again, a couple of trends as we are starting to get squeezed uh, to, to the downside here. Found a bit of support uh, on uh, a double bottom as well, so keep a, a watch should we get back towards that level, uh, a break of that, then yes, yesterday's lower point could well come in. Uh, I have to say the oil market not, you know, we were saying this yesterday, for me it's still been relatively 
uh, choppy and, and hard to, to get an overall direction. You can see where we're trading now is pretty much the average price, you would say, of the last, well, month, to be honest, pretty much in the, in the middle between the range and uh, right now you can see a very choppy area uh, as well. So no harm, I would say, in just sort of holding off from that. Yes, the key point, you can see still marks up from yesterday, 53.78, so not just the lower point, but also uh, a higher, uh, well, a few of the highest from previous. So 53.78 might be, you know, best to sort of wait to see what happens there or a break of, of this trend to the downside uh, as well. Getting involved between that, maybe not ideal. Quick look over at gold to, to wrap it. You can see we're actually just finding a bit of resistance now on yesterday morning's low. So keep a, a watch on, on that, see how that uh, reacts. Let's have a look at this trend coming up to that area as well. Obviously with stocks just drifting lower. And if, if equities in Europe are to push lower, Eurostox is on the low the day now and the DAX. If I just have a quick look at a chart on my left hand side, it is almost doing the same. Then you could, uh, could see gold breaking through. I uh, probably want a confirmed break before getting in here and then you would be looking obviously to uh, go for some of the previous resistance points from, uh, well, what would be resistance now support from yesterday. So keep a watch on this 1490 pivot previous low uh, for, for gold and levels to the downside. Previous high of the day at 1489.1, bit of a, a mini uh, range to, to keep a, an eye on there. Uh, equities which will just drift lower are going to help that cause safe havens up the bunds you can see if I just bring this into picture not far off doing what gold is doing uh, and getting to the previous low of yesterday morning uh, 10 ticks above where we're trading T notes also the same here you can see coming up to a resistance point uh, as well so you've got that trend line for the S&P gold uh, at the pivot uh, as well um, so keep a watch on that the pound actually just now before uh, we wrap it up. You can see just breaking through its uh, pivot level as well. I'll be keeping a, a watch around 29.43.51 uh, as a relatively important uh, zone as well. Trend lines aren't amazing on this, uh, so I would just be looking at individual support points uh, as well. Nothing come through on, on TweetDeck as far as I can see, um, but we'll keep a, a closer watch on that. Hope we all have a, a good uh, trading day. Any questions as usual, uh, please do uh, let us know.